So my journey into traveling really started when I was studying neuroscience in the US. And uh, I saw this movie called The Motorcycle Diaries. You might have heard about it, right? So it's about Che Guevara traveling uh, on a motorcycle in South America. When I saw the movie, I was like, someday I'm going to do this. And uh, when I finished my uh, master's degree, when I got my job offer, I called them up. I said, I need two months. Uh, went to South America, picked up a motorcycle, did some 8,000 kilometers on a motorcycle solo in uh, South America. Came back to the US, wrote a book about it. Now, when I was traveling there, uh, I noticed a lot of people who had just quit their jobs, decided to just backpack for six months, for a year, till the money runs out, whatever. And I come from a middle class background and I was like, man, this is just crazy, right? Nobody does that. At least Indians don't do it. Sure enough, after working for four or five years in the US, I had enough money in the bank. I quit my job and traveled around the world for a year, did some 36 countries. And these kinds of trips are more about the kinds of people you meet and the kinds of things that happen to you rather than the pictures you take and the monuments you visit. And I'm going to talk about two things. So one is a person that I met, uh, one is a particular event that happened to me. Uh, so let's just get started. Uh, the guy you see on the left is uh, Pablo Escobar's brother. How many of you have heard of uh, Pablo Escobar? Okay, few people. This guy is a real world godfather. You've probably seen the movie Godfather. In the 80s and 90s, Pablo Escobar was the most notorious cocaine dealer in the world and actually probably the most notorious cocaine lord that the world has ever seen. Now, when at the height of his empire, you know, when he was running this entire show, the guy had about 80 planes. The guy owned 80 planes and he operated his entire worldwide cocaine business with his fleet of 80 planes. He was doing about $500 million in cocaine every single day. This is in the 80s and 90s, yeah? So the guy was chased down by the CIA. He's originally from Colombia. He was killed. His brother is still alive. You can go to his hometown in Medellin and there is something called a Pablo Escobar tour that you can take. At the end of that tour, you get to meet his brother who's still alive. Now his brother was also in the business. He grew up as a very successful athlete, as a cyclist. And he could have had a very successful career there, but when his brother got into the cocaine business, he got sucked into it. This guy ran the finances. He never killed anyone, he never ordered any killings. He only ran the finances. So when he was caught, he got 22 years in jail. Uh, he, you know, spent 11 years in the jail, got out. The guy unfortunately cannot see, cannot hear anymore, old guy. At the end of that Pablo Escobar tour, you get to meet him. Right, so and then after he explained all of this stuff, I asked him, so, if there is one thing in your life that you could change, what would you change? And in Spanish, he said, toda la vida, which means my entire life. If I had another chance, I could change my entire life. So that's that guy standing there with an FBI poster saying, FBI is willing to pay $10 million to find this guy. This was back in the 80s and 90s. He still has that poster as a souvenir. So this was in Norway. On the same round the world trip, I went to Norway and I was chasing something called the Midnight Sun. If you cross the Arctic Circle at the right time of the year, you get to see sun at midnight. So that's the only reason why I took this flight from uh, Oslo to Tromso. So it was a two hour domestic flight. I get on the flight. I hit cruising altitude in about half an hour. Before I know it, all the oxygen masks drop down. And the flight starts going down like I've never seen before in my life. I've traveled a lot in flights. I've never seen an oxygen mask uh, uh, down and I never wanted to see it down, but I did. And trust me, I could not even put it on. You hear that stuff so many times, do this, do that, do that. When it actually falls down, I failed. I was trying to wrap that thing twice around my head. I couldn't remember that I just have to pull those two tiny strings. I couldn't remember couldn't do it. And so the flight is going down like I've never seen before. For about five to ten minutes, I'm looking outside the window, wondering what the hell is happening. The flight, uh, the captain, she was a lady, she made a one sentence announcement. One sentence announcement in Norwegian. I didn't understand any of that. I'm looking around, nobody's speaking a word. Pin drop silence. For about five to ten minutes, 
I am literally sitting in my chair, you know, just helping myself in the chair. Like if I hadn't put my hands and feet on the ground and on the handrest, I probably would have fallen down. So it was going down like that. It was a proper nose dive. I'm looking outside the window, wondering when am I going to see some fire, or you know, when when is one of these uh, you know sort of wings going to you know break off and fly away? When do I know that I'm dying, right? So we were all waiting for death, and there was only one girl in my row. I was on uh, one end and uh, on one window. There was another girl in another window. She was crying like it's her last day. It probably would have been, right? So. For 10 minutes, this whole drama happens, and luckily, the flight stabilizes. I don't know what the hell is going on because the, uh, the lady captain is not announcing anything. It turns around, comes back to Oslo. Until it comes back, nobody is speaking a word. And then it lands, and the lady starts announcing that the pro there was some problem in a air valve or something. So in the world of airlines, this is not a big problem to have. It's one of the better problems to have. But that doesn't help you when your flight is going down and you don't know what the hell is going on. So I landed and started thinking that, you know, if this was the last day of my life, it better be when I'm doing around the world trip. Yeah? So there is a guy standing here who lived a very adventurous life. I'm sure he, you know, I'm sure he escaped death a billion times, right, when he was in the cocaine business. That guy regrets his entire life, and there's a guy on the right who doesn't regret a single moment in his life. So the choice is yours.